The Crown of Kings has been stolen by the Archmage and taken across the backlands to Mampeng. You have been sent back to get it. Should you fail, the whole of Kakabad will surely fall. A journey begins. From the outpost settlement in Anoland, you crash the Shamuntandi Hills. Along the way, you ventured down a goblin mine and faced a terrible ogre, spared the life of a defeated assassin, and fought and killed the dreaded Manticore. You faced cruel twists of fate and deadly traps. A test of character. To survive, you used your blade rarely and your intelligence frequently. You deceived, charmed, and tricked your way through. Your spirit guide changed as you changed, becoming the ape. But now all of that seems a distant memory, for you are approaching Kaa, the city port of traps. Founded on a ford of the J Jabiji River, and Kaa was once a camp for the pirates who ambushed merchants sailing from Lake Lumel to the sea. But the camp grew, it became a village, the village became a town, and now Ka is a magnificent for Nera duels and thieves, ruled over by a council of villains. Let the city do its worst. Hey everyone, we're back! It's Sorcery 2! Car, City Port of Traps, there it is! Oh boy, I am super excited. And check this out. It's all 3D and whooshy whoosh. Whoosh. So cool. Oh, I love this game. Look at it. It's so amazing. Okay, so remember how I said back in the first game uh, that a car seemed so small, right? But this is all of it now. It's the entire second game. There's just so much where this little tiny dude... And we gotta go through all of this. There's just so much. So much to do. So much to see. So what's wrong with taking the back streets? <laughs> uh, anyway. Twilight. Already. The great city of Kar has loomed large on the horizon all day. But has been slow to reach. The path tracing great loops back and forth through a deep and narrow pass. Walk on. You have not seen a living soul except once, when a dark figure raced across the hilltops overhead and then was lost from view. So you are naturally cautious when you round a bend in the path and see a beggar, crouched low against a rock, muttering to himself. You stop, out of sight behind an outcrop, but the beggar does not look like much of a threat. Approach him. You call a greeting and stride over, and the man leaps to his feet, drawing a short stick from inside his cloak. Who goes there? He demands. What's your business in car? Greetings, old man. Enough of your greetings, the beggar spits back. I asked you a question. Who are you and where are you headed? Uh, I am on a quest. The man prods a little harder with his stick. A quest? A quest for what? I seek the crown of kings. You answer, watching his face closely for a reaction. If he has one, he hides it well. Never heard of it, he replies. What's it for? He prods harder. Answer me, or you'll face the consequences. What consequences? Better you don't find out, he replies darkly. I am the city guard. No one enter cars except for me. And then, despite his old age and clear ill health, he comes at you, waving his stick. <laughs> So, we can actually choose to fight him here. Um, but it's so sad. It's so... I don't want to fight this guy. He waves the stick close to your face, jabbing a few times. But you push the point aside with one hand. Alright then, he declares. We'll settle this fairly. He tosses the stick to one side and raises his fists. The knuckles are, the knuckles are blackened with scabs. I still won't fight you. Uh, I mean it. The beggar makes a short braying noise, like a laugh, and then lamps you on the nose. It is surprisingly painful. Then he is ready for another swing. Step aside. You step back, and with that, the fight seems to drain from him. He sits down again, suddenly sad. Very well, 
he moans. You're right, I suppose. I can't defend this city on my own. You're very brave. Am I? He asks, looking up. I don't feel brave. I'm still alive. Does that make me a coward? He shivers. You don't have any food, do you? He asks sadly. Give him something to eat. You rummage in your pack and pull out a hunk of bread and cheese. Here. We weren't going to use it anyway. <laughs> We've had these rations the entire game. The man grabs it and eats gleefully, like a wild dog. He murmurs and grumbles to himself as he does so. Good luck. He nods to you, mouth still full. And to you. Mouth still full. Hang on, let me try. And to you. There. <laughs> I did my best. <laughs> he screws up his brows for a moment in concentration. And listen, there are archers on the wall. The watchword is Kanto Pani. You waste no more time and take your leave. The path winds through gorse and thick grass. Car squats in a basin in the hills like a stagnant, festering pool. You turn one corner, then another, and then the stone walls of the city are looming over you. Uh, talking to people will help you on your quest, blah, blah, blah. Okay, let's go. So in this game, what that was talking about was we have to, uh, what is it? It's, there's a, f we have to leave the city, but in order to do so, we have to go through a certain, like, magical gate that hasn't been used in centuries or something and it takes like a magical phrase so we have to figure out before and it, the gate is uh it's uh right here that's the gate there in order to go through this north gate we have to go around the entire city like a million times like you have to rewind through the game over and over again to find each little segment of this magical spell phrase that opens the door and you're screwed well you're not screwed if you don't i mean you can kind of go through it i think without all of them but without all of them the entire city like burns to the ground so that's scary <laughs> that's kind of sucks so let's just uh keep going oh shit what happened okay into the oh uh, no we need to climb the slope the archers will see us if we go down there. You scramble up the slope for a better view of the wall. It is formed of staggering man-sized stone blocks, held together with gallons and gallons of mud and loam dredged from the base of the river. It curves away in both directions, unbroken except for the gate. And it looks like the old soldier was right. There is an archer posted on the battlement above the gate, watching the clearing so yeah like i said we were going to be seen no matter what if we went down there it would have been a bad time watch the archer you keep watching the guard above the gate looks this way and that but doesn't shift from his position uh run for it the archer seems to be turning his gaze in a regular pattern you wait for two heartbeats then make a dash across the scrub you're halfway across before he spots you halt who goes there he shouts as he brings his bow to bear. An arrow whizzes past you to your left, one thuds into the mud just ahead of you, and then a third catches you in the shoulder. Keep running! You pull the arrow free and keep running until you are in cover against the wall. From overhead, the guard is cursing loudly. You have only moments, most likely, before he comes down from the battlement and warns his fellows. At the gate. The south gate stands before you. It is tall as two men and would be broad enough to ride three horses through. If only it were open, but instead it is locked, and there is no way into the city. Luckily, of course, you have a key. You quickly remove the Sven's chief key from your pack and slip it into the lock. The tumblers click as the key, as the key turns. Go inside. You ease open the door, peering cautiously inside. There was no one about. You slip through the gate and it slams shut behind you, key still in the lock. Whoever the next ruffian to visit car may be, he will be very grateful for your little gift. Through the gate. You pause just inside the shadow of the gate. There are no guards about. At least, none that you can see. But the guard from the battlements will have told someone that he saw you, so it is only a matter of time. To your left is a low stove building with metal bars for windows. Uh, hurry out of the yard. You stride quickly away from the gate, but you are only halfway to the road when two soldiers come around the corner from the left. Strong, expert hands grab your wrists. You are dragged, 
pulled and forced into the low building. Oh man. I thought, okay, so I had never done any of the running before. I usually just walked up to the gate. Uh, and that always ended up with me ending up here in this little prison type deal. I thought if I did something differently, I wouldn't end up here, but I guess I ended up here anyway. Uh, the door of stone building is slammed, and the lock turns over behind you. You look around. The walls are stone, and the windows are barred. A bench against one wall is the only piece of furniture where an old man sits. He is dressed in dirty robes, and seems in a sorry state. So that's him. Uh, and that's his pet rat. Not really. Um... Here, we get to play one of my favorite games in this game. <laughs> it has like a little mini game to it. Uh, Swindle Stones. It's really fun. I like it a lot. You step towards the shadowy bench. Greetings, old man. He ignores you. He is concentrating hard on something on the ground just in front of him. A collection of small stones, scattered as though for fortune telling. After a moment, he gathers them up and tosses them again. You notice that his other hand is missing completely. The left sleeve of his tunic hangs limp from his side. Look at the stones. You step over to peer at his stones, but he snatches them up quickly into his palm. If you want to play, he says defensively, then you have to bet. I don't. I only have one old man voice. <laughs> don't judge me. <laughs> uh, play what? Why? The man replies with a shark-like grin. Swindle stones, of course. Swindle stones. Stranger in town? Don't you know how to play? Better and better. He shows you one of his stones. It is a strange four-value die. Sit. He pats the bench beside him with one hand. Play. We can talk while I beat you. You go over to the bench, intrigued. So this is Swindle Stones. Um, it's really, really simple. It's completely a game of chance and manipulation. Uh, you have to manipulate the AI and the AI into thinking you have a certain value uh, of on your dice, and then you. So basically, it's a game of chance and lying. Uh, you'll see. Roll dice. So these are our stones. We get four of them. Hmm. The game is simple. We roll and bet on what's coming up. So for instance, I might start and bet that between us, we've rolled at least two of those thingies. So it has. So we have to count how much we have, and then we have to guess how much they might have. So I have one of these threes. So with four of his dice it's a pretty good chance that he might have another one of these as well. So I won't be wrong. And then, yeah. So if you believe my bid is too high, you can call and we can check. Otherwise, we keep bidding higher and higher, blah, 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 blah. So he thinks he has three of those. Um, now, the problem is I have three ones. I can't say three ones because that's lower than what he called. Three twos. Three ones is lower. So, I'm gonna have to say four ones, and just fucking hope that he's got one, or he doesn't call me on my bluff. Shit. Okay, let's see. Please have one. I don't want to lose. Yes! Okay, see, we did it. So he had one as well, so now there's four of them on the table. I won, and now he loses a dice because he called the bluff and it was wrong. Okay, uh, I have... Alright. We can start really high... To make it go by really quickly and have a better advantage over this. Ooh. Uh oh. Oh, okay. Maybe I didn't get an advantage from that. Oh shit. I'm gonna lose this one probably. Oh. Okay. Let's call him on that. I highly doubt if we go any higher, he's gonna call. Um, we have to do it. Oh, shit. Okay. Oh, that's not good. One? Okay, let's... I don't have any of those, but we can actually manipulate him here. We can say I have one by raising him a second one. And then he'll think I have one. He'll think that I have one. So he'll go even higher the next time. And I don't even have one, so he'll be wrong. Fuck! <laughs> oh, what? That never happens! 
Shit! This is not fair. <laughs> this is not fair. I'm gonna... Oh, uh, okay. Mm, bid 1-1. One, one. <laughs> two. Uh, two fours. No, there's no way. There's no way. I call your bluff. Fuck off! Ugh! God, I suck at this game! I suck at this game so much. I thought I was really good. <laughs> well. Oof. Um. One twos. Alright, let's say we have two twos, because I don't even have one. How does he know? This is cheating! <laughs> He's cheating! He has weighted dice. He gave me the weighted ones. He knows. Mm, three threes? Fuck. This is the end. I lose. Here we go. Yep. Oh well. Ugh. Even though I lost, I am so excited to do this again. I'm so excited to continue on. Uh... Next time on Double Jump, we'll keep going, and uh, we won't rematch, okay? <laughs> Bye. GG no re!